up on Access Tech Live. Amazon unveils a smarter Alexa, new devices, and breakthrough accessibility features. Cruise is testing a driverless taxi for wheelchair users. And Apple's new iPhones are in stores tomorrow. This is Access Tech Live with Stephen Scott and Mark Lalo. The latest in tech and accessibility every week. Follow us and get involved now at Access Tech Live. Hey everyone, welcome along to another episode of Access Tech Live. And yes, we are live. And hey, listen, I am so glad we're here. I am Stephen Scott. Mark Aflalo is by my side as always this and every week. Mark, how are you feeling this week? It's another big week in tech. I can't believe a week has passed. I'm pumped up. Microsoft just left the stage announcing some pretty cool stuff. They didn't take the cue from Apple and do it a couple days ahead of our show. We'll have to, you know, deal with them later, but I'm excited because Microsoft, Amazon, lots of cool people joining the show this week. It's fun to be here and we hope that yeah, you get involved at home. Do you know what the Apple event seems like I, I don't know, a month ago now, doesn't it? It just it was it seems like ages ago. It was only last week. And so much has happened. And you know, that is one of the joys of being live here as Access Tech Live. We can bring you the very latest, and like you say, Mark, hot off the stage, Microsoft's latest products and big announcements as well. Some huge news for accessibility this week. We'll be boiling all of this down today with Patrick O'Rourke. He's the editor in chief at Mobile Syrup, and he will be joining us today. Also, Celine Lee will be here. She is the uh, Alexa country manager for Canada. I nearly called her Alexa Lee, but she's not that. And I will warn you, by the way, we are going to set off a lot of these Amazon Echo devices today. <laughs> so if you have one, you yeah, might want to pull the plug on it for the next 60 minutes or so. But look, let's get into all of this. Let's kick off with the headlines. Well, moments ago, Microsoft unveiled new hardware and software the Surface Laptop Go, the Surface Studio Laptop 2, and of course, Microsoft's Copilot, their generative AI model as a service. Now, Copilot is officially gonna be launching on September 26th, and will be built into Windows 11, which will also be pushing an update that same day. It's gonna be available seamlessly across all apps and experiences, including Office 365, Windows, the Edge browser, and Bing. Now, one of the cooler announcements from Microsoft's event is an adaptive trackpad that's gonna be available on their new Surface Studio laptop, something they're calling the most inclusive trackpad on any computer. Now, they demonstrated it on stage with a user who was born without fingers on his left hand, who said that he quote unquote cried the first time he used it because of how well it worked for him. Obviously, we're gonna pick these stories apart and these announcements with Microsoft soon. Amazon made some pretty cool announcements yesterday, starting with a brand new natural language model powering their smart assistant, Alexa. Uh, starting with a new, more conversational voice, here's Rohit Prasad, Amazon Senior Vice President and Head Scientist for Artificial Generative Intelligence, with a demo of the voice in 2014 compared to what's to come. But this is how it sounded, so let's take a look. I love the Starry Night by Vincent Van Gogh. It depicts the view from his asylum room at St. Rémy de Provence just before sunrise. But here's the preview of what's going to come early next year. I love the Starry Night by Vincent van Gogh. It depicts the view from his asylum room at St. Rémy de Provence just before sunrise. Now, another new feature coming soon is called Let's Chat, and it was demonstrated by Dave Limp, the Senior Vice President of Amazon Devices and Services. Alexa, Let's Chat. Hi there, what can I help you with? How are you? I'm doing well. I am very happy to be able to help so many people every day by chatting with them. How about yourself? Now that new feature along with that smoother voice that we demonstrated will be coming soon to Echo devices, new and old. Also on display was a new Echo Show 8 with upgraded interiors, a new home screen experience, and spatial audio. Now during the keynote, Amazon put a big emphasis on accessibility, and they announced some new features and shared a great video about it. And of course, the A-Lady giving people a greater sense of independence by using just their voice. Now, one of those new accessibility features announced was the addition of eye gaze technology in their new Fire Max 11 tablet. Here's Amazon's Vice President of Alexa Global Business, Heather Zorn. Our first foray to allow customers with mobility or speech disabilities to use Alexa with their eyes. To start, customers can use their gaze to perform a set of preset actions, like controlling their smart home or playing music. 
all hands and voice free. And Alexa Emergency Response brings hands-free access to emergency services that are tailored to the user without them needing to actually even lift a finger. Here again is Heather Zorn. With Alexa Emergency Assist, you get 24-7 urgent response, allowing anyone to call for help without having to get to a phone and get connected to a dedicated, professionally trained urgent response agent. Those agents will have pre-saved information you've provided, like medications uh, the, and your address, as well as the echo device the call's being received from. So first responders know exactly where to go when they arrive. And with our new emergency contacts feature, you can identify family and friends who should be notified automatically if an event like this happens. Now one more accessibility feature is called Call Translation that offers real-time translation that gives users the opportunity to communicate across languages more effectively. Among the supported languages are obviously English and French, and we're going to dive into more of these announcements with Celine Lee a bit later on in the show. Now Cruise, a self-driving company, car company, has announced a new prototype autonomous taxi service. The driverless car will be hitting the roads in trials soon, and it's designed to give wheelchair users easier access by lowering to the curb and extending an automatic ramp. Inside, there'll be several new docking mechanisms, allowing passengers to be safe for the ride. Cruise noted this is the first generation of the concept, and they're going to be working with the disability community to make the vehicle accessible to even more users in future generations. Neuralink, Elon Musk's company, is looking to start their first in-human clinical trials. They're actively recruiting people who are quadriplegic due to cer uh, cervical spinal cord injuries, or ALS, to take part in the study. The study is going to implant an interface into the brain and hopefully bypass the injury itself and enable people with paralysis to control external devices with just their thoughts. And finally, Stephen, Apple's new iPhone 15 lineup, along with the Apple Watch Series 9 and Ultra 2, as well as the new AirPods Pro 2, will be available in stores tomorrow. But guess what? We've got them here. We're going to be going hands-on a little bit later on in the show. Whew, where do we start? <laughs> I mean, honestly, <laughs> I don't know what to pick out of all of that. I mean, it feels like accessibility is everywhere. And I've got to start with that, right? That is leading because... You know, normally we would find stories through the course of a week and we would say, hey, that's a great story, you know, but it's maybe buried under something else. You know, two events we've had this week, Amazon and Microsoft, both showcasing accessibility on the main stage. I've got to say huge plaudits to them for that. And of course, the Neuralink story is fascinating. And I sometimes think the message gets lost by the messenger sometimes when it comes to Elon Musk, because it is, of course, he was the guy who founded that company. And, you know, I, I do wonder where things are going to go with all of this. The message, as I say, does tend to get lost a little bit. But, you know, there's a huge question mark over what this technology can and cannot do. And, you know, I always spread a little bit of caution when I hear these stories, because yeah. we hear so many stories about research and we hear so many stories about what could be and what could be cured and all of that. And I think we have to take caution. But do you know what? Great, great news for accessibility this week. Oh, no. I mean, it's it's a, it's a to see it front and center like this is absolutely spectacular. And clearly, you know, the effort that everybody is doing to try and make accessibility top of mind is resonating across other yep. companies as well. So I'm excited to obviously share that news and break it down with the people on the show today. Absolutely. And uh, of course, we uh, do this thing where because we're live, we why not? Let's put some questions out there into the social media verse and ask people, you know, what's going on? And this week, we want to ask a specific question about those Alexa devices. It doesn't only have to be an Alexa device, Stephen. It could be your Google Home. Maybe it's Siri. But here's the question oh, yeah. for today. The, que the question is very simple. What's the strangest thing that you've asked your smart speaker and... What was the response? This is going to be a fun one. Uh, I know there's a lot of things mm -hmm. that we've tried in my home, and we're going to get to those a little later, and I'll tell you about my stories. So what is the strangest thing you've asked your smart speaker, and what was the response? So get involved. You can connect on all social media platforms. It's at Access Tech Live. And, of course, if you want to email us, the email address is feedback at accesstechlive.com, and you can get involved. We're going to break down the headlines with the editor-in-chief of Mobile Sierra, Patrick O'Rourke, is standing by and joining us next here on Access Tech Live. We want to hear from you. Follow us on social media and get involved at Access Tech Live. We'll be right back. In tech and 
accessibility. This is Access Tech Live with Stephen Scott and Marco Flalo. Welcome back. Now, let's talk all about the big week in tech news, of course. We've got Amazon to talk about, Microsoft is breaking, and lots more besides. That's the joy of being Access Tech Live. Uh, I'm Steve Scott, Marco Flalo is there. We also have with us Editor-in-Chief at Mobile Syrup. He's also host of the Syrupcast podcast, which he recorded at Apple's WWDC event and also uh, recently at uh, the big September event as well. Fantastic. Patrick O'Rourke. Great to have you here on Access Tech Live. Thanks for having me on the show. Uh, so you were there at the big event in September, the big iPhone reveal, the new Apple Watch reveal, all of that. Uh, was it cool? And can you get us in next year? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, can, I can do my best. Um, I, I think it was a good event, right? Uh, there's a lot of cool things shown off, but it's definitely an incremental year for Apple, whether you're looking at the iPhone 15 Pro or the base level iPhone, or even the Apple Watch or the Apple Watch Ultra 2. It's all minor upgrades. This isn't a reinvention of what Apple's been doing for the past decade or so. Patrick, do you think that we're ever going to have those uh, those moments anymore where it's going to be a bigger reveal? I mean, we've come to the point now where I think every year seems somewhat incremental, unless there's a new software feature that kind of goes over the top. Um. I don't think we're ever going to see that big, like, huge, bombastic moment again. I mean, the closest thing that I've seen recently was the, the reveal of the Vision Pro. But even then, that, that's tempered a bit by the fact that we've seen virtual reality headsets before. But I, I do think that a redesign of the Apple Watch is coming. And I do think that the, a more significant redesign of the iPhone is coming. But probably not for, at the very least, another two years or so. Oh, so boring, isn't it? I know another year of this. I mean, surely next year is going to be the big year, right? But okay, let's get to current events because I can't believe it was only a week ago, the Apple event, and that has been completely usurped this week by Amazon and Microsoft having big events. Uh, of course, they're both slightly tied together this time around, Patrick, because Panos Panay, who used to be in charge of the Surface division and in charge of all the devices uh, that we saw coming out from Microsoft, uh, he's left and he's gone to Amazon. Um, what was your initial reaction to that news? I mean, I was, I was surprised. He's been at Microsoft for, for 20 years. Um, I've interviewed him myself a couple times over the years. He's probably one of my favorite tech executives to speak to because he's always very honest and I think that his journey with the service line is fascinating. He kind of built it from the ground up. It was a, a new category, a new product category that um, him and his team created. Uh, so, I, I mean, 20 years is a long time. I'm, I'm sure anyone wants to do something different at 20 years. But to me, he, he's synonymous with the Microsoft brand and the Surface line. So I was still a little shocked to see that happen. Um, and also shocked to see him go to Amazon, which makes me think that Amazon might be working on something really cool behind the scenes that we haven't seen yet. You know, we haven't seen it from Amazon. Um, obviously, we ne we'll, we won't know about it for a time. And I'm curious to see what he does bring to the table. But so many announcements from Amazon yesterday, just yesterday, the benefits of being live here. Um, anything catch your attention as something that was more si significant than the other? I expected a little bit more hardware from them other than just, you know, like the Fire TVs and the updated Echo Show 8. Definitely, I think the language, the new language model and the speech pattern for, for Alexa was cool. Any big takeaways on your part from that? Yeah, I mean, everything was ex everything that I saw was expected. It's the same usual hardware updates that we see Amazon do every year. Uh, the Echo Show 8, I mean, looks cool, but it's very similar to the last gen Echo Show 8 in many ways. The only thing that stood out for me was the um, AI Alexa features. I really need to try them out for myself before passing final judgment, but they, they were very cool. That, that's something that we haven't seen before from a voice-activated assistant, at least to my knowledge. So they're exciting updates that I'm, I'm, I'm really interested in getting my own hands on and kind of putting through the paces once, once a beta version of it is available in Canada. I'm really intrigued by the announcements, but I'm also intrigued, of course, from from our perspective here at Access Tech Live, we're looking into all the accessibility announcements and eye gaze was one particular feature which stood out. And, and the reason it stood out for two reasons. One, because it's a fantastic feature that helps a lot of people who cannot physically touch the device. But what was also interesting was that it's only available on the Fire, now let me get this right, Amazon Fire Max 11, which is their 11th, 11 inch tablet weird name, 
Uh, but it's got this this you know obviously process capability in it to to handle that, and that does rather unusually for Amazon, I think, focus on maybe a bit more of a pro tier. Even they, they brought out a kid's tablet that's a pro edition. So does that tell you, and, and maybe this ties in a little bit with what you're saying about Panos Panay, does that maybe lead us to suggest there's a bit more of a higher quality, higher tier of Amazon product coming down the line? I think so. I, I think for for Amazon to be able to track someone with that level of reputation in the industry, there has to be something behind the scenes um, I, I talked about it with my team when that announcement came out. I'm like, we we honestly don't know what that could be, whether it's a VR headset, an AR headset, something beyond that. Um, but in in my mind, th there's got to be something big that that Samsung's uh, sorry that Amazon's doing, and they're just not quite ready to talk about it yet. Because I I don't think he would have jumped ship for Microsoft to go to a, a company like Amazon if there wasn't a marquee project like that where he could meaningfully contribute to it. Or, or perhaps even something that maybe he, you know, he's bringing to the table that sure, might be sure. better suited for a company like Amazon as well, which is kind of interesting. You know, flipping over to the Microsoft side, uh, you know, they they literally got off the stage a couple hours ago. Still news coming through. Obviously, there's a new you know laptop Go. There's a new lap, you know, Surface uh, Studio laptop. Um, one thing that kind of surprised me that was not on stage was any mention about gaming because earlier this week we we saw this giant leak from Microsoft and there was inklings about a new Xbox design and I know you're you're a big gaming guy you talk a lot about new games or the consoles um, was was there a surprisingly missing element there to you as well or is it just my my crazy mind uh, overactive. I mean, these Surface events, they, they don't really talk about gaming that much. Sometimes it's kind of mentioned. Um, but I mean, if, if they were planning to talk about gaming, I wouldn't be surprised if that was was cut from the event a bit, kind of to supersede the, the leak earlier this week regarding um, pretty much the whole Xbox uh, lineup for the next the next couple of years. I've, in my career, I've never seen something like that just appear this far ahead of time. We, we got like a whole look at the redesigned uh, Xbox Series X that's going to come out in a couple of years with with no disk drive and a new controller and a few other um, insights into Microsoft's gaming strategy. And I've, I've never seen that happen before. I, I want to just pick of... up, though, on, ahead, on... Sorry, Mark, go. No, no, go ahead. Well, I was just going to ask you, because I want to pick up on... I know you guys want to talk about games all day, right? But look, you know, I, I'm not interested in games, so I don't want to hear about this. What I want to talk about are the Surface devices, because look, we've got the Surface Go... Now, hang on. Surface Laptop Go 3. What is it with these names? Surface Laptop Go 3 and the Surface Studio Laptop, or something in... The, you know, those <laughs> words eventually make up, yeah, something. Um so initial thoughts on that, because that, again, is, is clearly leaning towards your kind of everyday consumer and a prosumer. And it's interesting to see them almost shrink down, unless the plans, of course, to be more devices coming out. But no mention of, for example, a new Surface Pro, which is, I guess, one of the most popular tablet laptops. Yeah, I, they were expected updates. I, they're minor leaks from this event, so uh, my team and I kind of knew what was coming really just processor bumps. These are the same devices that we've seen in years past with more powerful chips. And that's what we've seen Microsoft do with the Surface Pro line that you just mentioned. Every year, it's it's very, very similar, just with a new chip. There's no big design changes or anything like that happening um, with Microsoft's product line, at least for the last couple of years. One of the things well, that they- Hang on, Patrick. Did... I just want to say one mm -hmm. thing, though, on that, because the, the Surface Laptop Go 3, uh, or whatever it's called this week, uh, that is is- it at least appears from what I've read to be significantly higher powered this year, which is interesting because last year it was a little bit underpowered. I think it had a Pentium Gold in it. Who uses that? I mean, what is even what is that? So you know, there was a Pentium Gold in there, which I think allowed you to open up one Edge browser and one tab, and then that would be it. Your computer would crash. But you know, now they've obviously put in some serious processors in there with the Core i3 and the Core i5, and it's got a little bit more. Uh, speedy. So, you know, I think I, I think maybe, you know, maybe on the Surface uh, Laptop Studio side, perhaps, it's just a minor increase, but it seems a bit more of a jump for these other for these other laptops, for these kind of lower end. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I would agree with you. I'm I'm a design guy, so that, that's what I always I always care about. Um, I, I care what products <laughs> what look, look like, like almost in some ways. So <laughs> so that, that that's what I what I'm always thinking about. That's where my head's at when new devices are revealed. 
one of the things they did on stage was I mean, they put up a, an M2 Max MacBook Pro against the new <laughs> Surface Laptop Studio. And, of course, they, they demonstrated something where, of course, the Surface Studio blew away the MacBook, um, which is uh, we've never really seen in real world kind of on any videos whatsoever. Um, you think that was just a, a little marketing gimmick to try and uh, push the envelope and do a shot over Apple's bow? I, I love when tech tech companies like take shots at each other like this. I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of a lot of truth to it. Um, w- one of the things that that I, I think is is interesting about Apple's M series chips is just the battery life that they offer, and that's not something that like this event was a little bit different, I, I, at least for us to cover because it wasn't live streamed. Right? We we have a reporter yeah. at the event, kind of like feeding information to myself and my team, um, and just as an interesting anecdote. Over the course of this hour-long live stream, he's he's a Windows guy, the guy we had reporting at this event. Um, his laptop dies um, <laughs> almost right at the end of the event. It didn't didn't even make it through the hour-long thing. Uh, so that that was something that I was hoping Microsoft would talk a little bit more about was was battery life. But to, to bring it back to your to your your main point, I I love when tech companies take shots at each other. I think it's fun. I think it adds some color to the industry, and it's something that we always cover because our, our readers are interested in it. Well, as consumers, we're the ones who benefit from this right at the end of the day, right? Competition is totally. healthy, and it's always it's always fun to experience them. Patrick, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Of course, if people want to follow you online. Uh, personally, it's at Patrick underscore O'Rourke. And, of course, you can follow Mobile Syrup and, of course, the, the Syrup cast. Thank you so much for being here this week. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks, when we Patrick. come back here at Access Tech Live, we're going to be going hands-on with Apple's new iPhone. So stick around. This is Access Tech Live. We want to hear from you. Follow us on social media and get involved at Access Tech Live. We'll be right back. The latest in tech and accessibility. This is Access Tech Live with Stephen Scott and Mark Aflalo. Hey, welcome back. I am Stephen Scott. He is Mark Aflalo, and we are having lots of fun. Hope you can join us and join in online as well with our question. Of course, we're asking you this week about the strange things that you've asked. Uh, Lady A, I'm going to say Lady A, Mark, because, you know, I don't feel right saying that word all the time. We're setting off devices all over the place. Alexa, play Frank Sinatra. Sorry. Uh, We are live, so we can do things like this. It's cool, isn't it? Uh, But look, uh, let's move away from Amazon and Microsoft for a minute and actually go back just one week to talk about Apple and their new products. And you, you lucky, lucky person, I think is the word I'm allowed to use on here. Uh, You've got new products. I do have new products. I want to say a little shout out to our good friend Philip in uh, New Brunswick as well, who was uh, watching the live stream online. And Amanda in Peterborough, she reached out on Twitter as well, or X, sorry. Uh, well, you know, throw it in there. Yes, yeah, so and Stephen, in front of me, I've got this wonderful display. I've got this wonderful display. I've got uh, uh, the new AirPods Pro 2 with the USB-C case. I've got the Apple Watch Ultra 2. But guess what? I'm putting those aside. I don't want to talk about them oh. now. No. Because the pièce wow. de résistance, as they say, Stephen, uh, are the new iPhones, and in front of me, I know. Mm. Listen, come on, we're gonna go French here. We gotta, we gotta be uh, multicultural. <laughs> I've got uh, two <laughs> devices and a case to talk about. Okay, two devices okay. and a case uh, on oh, my left. The case, uh, mm. you know, the case. Okay. We'll, we'll put the case aside for one moment. But on my left, mm. yeah. I've got the uh, iPhone 15 Plus, which is the larger screen, 6.7 inch diagonal. I've got on my okay. right the iPhone uh, Pro 15 Pro. Um, which one do you want to start with? Do you have any preference? Is there I know which one you want to get oh, to. Which one do you want to start with? Well, I know which I know which I absolutely want to get to the the pro. But let's start with the plus because I think it's actually one of those devices you don't hear as much about. You hear about the fifteen. You hear about the pro lineup. So let's start with the plus. Let's give it some time. So this is I, I and I I restrain myself. I'm actually you're going to flip this phone over, click the box. I'm going to tear. I don't have nails. It's going to be a problem here. But I'm going to tear the actual seal off the device itself. Um, in front of you guys for the first time, just to prove that I have never opened this before. So we are experiencing this together. I should really grow a pair of nails here because it's, it's obviously difficult to do this. But uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get that off. Ah, we'll get it off. Here go we go. Go for it, Mark. Go so, for it. iPhone, iPhone 15 Pro. This is the uh, black color that I'm holding in front of me. They always showcase the back of the phone first because no one really cares about the front of these devices <laughs> anymore because they're all just a yeah. piece of glass and the color and the, all that you know hard earned money and stuff they're putting into it is on the back of this device. So I'll take it out of the box. And of course, just quickly inside the box, we've got a new USB-C braided USB-C cable, um, really nice, high quality. Hopefully oh, yeah. those don't 
get destroyed as much as the old ones. We've got a couple little pamphlets and, of course, a SIM card removal tool and the Apple traditional Apple sticker, which is always fun to have inside the box. And then we do what we normally do with unboxing to throw the box away because we don't care about it. Um, the first thing you notice with the Plus, Stephen, is obviously it's a matte black finish on the back. So no fingerprints that are really going to be stuck to that. But the camera system, which is in the top left-hand corner of the back, that's still shiny glass around the camera system. It's still supposed to be sapphire glass to actually protect the camera system. On this phone, on the 15 and the 15 Plus, we only have two cameras, but you've got that 48 megapixel camera and you've got that uh, other telephoto lens, of the, uh, sorry, the other ultra wide there as well, as well as the flash. When we flip the phone over, we're going to pull, I wish I can get like an ASMR mic here so you can hear the plastic going over the uh, the, the top, but we're not going to do it. The first thing you notice, honestly, number one is it does feel lighter. It does feel like a pretty light phone in your hand. Uh, the edges are a little bit more beveled than they were before. So rounded, and I'm not talking about the curvatures around the circumference of the phone. I'm talking about literally the edges from the glass to where it beats the body. It's more curved, so it feels a little bit smaller in your hand even though it's not actually smaller um on the left side you've got your traditional volume up volume down and this phone doesn't have that action button so on the left side you still got that on off for vibration and you've got the single button on the right hand side for sleep wake other than that and the dynamic island which is now standard on every new device there's not much new to this except for that USB-C connector that we have on the bottom. I'll try to hold it up to the camera here so you can see it. But it's a traditional USB-C connector and that dynamic island. So overall, I mean, the phone itself, the black color is really cool. It's no longer shiny and, and on the sides. Um, in Canada, we still have the SIM card tray on the left-hand side. On the US, they only mm -hmm. have the eSIM. And that screen, I mean, because it's a plus model, they default to bringing that screen down. Like when you set it up, it gives you that almost like re to be reachable with your thumb. Uh, but uh, other than that, it's, it's you know, it's an iPhone. It just feels a little bit lighter, especially for the larger device. Yeah, I mean, th this is not a massive upgrade, is it? I mean, we're talking a small speed upgrade here. This is the kind of device, if we're being honest about it, that is, if you've got an iPhone SE, second generation, or even earlier, maybe you've got an XR, maybe you've got an 11 or 12, this would be the time to perhaps make that upgrade to something like this. Now, I want to ask you about the material, because on the back of this is it aluminium or aluminum, as you might say? Is it, um, it what is it on the back? It is it is aluminum, uh, but it's brushed aluminum. So it, it doesn't, it's like a matte finish. So there's no more shiny, glossy, get your fingerprints all over this. Most people use this with a case. Okay. Apple actually has been on record saying they don't actually recommend you use it with a case because it's that durable. I don't really buy it. I mean, with a camera bump and everything extruding from it, I wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't use it without a case. And, and, but it, you know, it does feel really quite nice in the hand. It feels, it honestly feels lighter. And I'll bring in my iPhone, you know, 14 Pro Max, 14 Pro, not even the Pro Max from last year. It's lighter than that phone in my hand. And mm. I think it's physically okay. lighter than that. I don't think it's just a, an impression, but I know what you want me to get to and, and I'll, I'll get to it. I, I, I do. I want to, well, I, it's, it's, it's partly the weight question I have in mind here because, of course, the new iPhone 15 Pro is made with a titanium back, or I believe the, the, the actual shell of it is titanium. So therefore, uh, yeah, it's supposed material. to be what, up to 10% lighter. So uh, let, let's unbox this. Uh, and also, I well, want to know something. When you're opening these boxes, are you sniffing? Because you've got to do the sniff. No, I'm not. So you that, know what? You, know, not... you get the new smell. I'm not getting the new iPhone smell. It's not like the new Mac smell, which I know you can buy in certain places oh. of fragrance. No, the, you know what? Uh, the 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 Pro, uh, obviously, there's a Pro and the Pro Max. The only difference between the two devices, obviously, is the Pro Max has a bit larger of a battery, and it has that new uh, 5X zoom lens. This one does not, so it's just the regular Pro, 6.1 in screen diagonal. This color I have here is like the blue. It's almost like a like a midnight blue. It actually looks black from certain angles. The first thing you notice right out of the box, again, with that matte finish on the back, it's quite nice. You don't really notice the, the new material just yet, but you've got the three camera system on this. So you've got that extra camera, you've got that depth sensor and everything that goes along. In the box, it's the same thing as the Plus. You've got the braided cable, which is not color matched. So they're all white USB-C cables. We'll put that aside. And of course you get the SIM card removal tool. So this device, a little bit different when you start looking at the sides because the titanium has a little bit different of a finish. And I heard it's a little bit more susceptible to nicks and and, and scratches, even though it's more durable yeah. and it is lighter. 
overall before I even well let me rip off the the plastic from the front and I can even turn this on here um physically again it feels a little bit smaller in the hand than the existing than the existing pro which I have over here on my left which I'll bring in oh yeah because it the, defi- the bezels definitely feels smaller, lighter Stephen. right yeah the bezels are smaller you don't really notice lighter. that we well, don't notice it right away, especially on this color of a device, because you got to let the screen turn on and actually see the full screen with pixels lit to mm. notice whether or not the yeah. bezels are actually thinner. But the rounded edges uh, from the screen to the body do make it feel a little bit slimmer in your hand. And I remember Samsung doing this way back when with the Galaxy Note, when they curved the glass around it to make it seem like it was a bit more svelte in your hand. So, I'll, I'll you know, that definitely is lighter. It is noticeably lighter, and it feels a little bit thinner and smaller than than the uh, other pro version the only difference on this one on the left hand side is you've got this, the volume up volume down and you've got that action button which is just another button on the phone which as we know you can program to it pretty much shortcut to anything on the device if you wanted to yeah. on the right side you've got the sleep wake button and as you said the bezels when the screen is fully lit it's on the setup screen right now do definitely look a little bit thinner than the predecessor and overall the phone is actually millimeters thinner uh, and and not as wide and as tall as the previous one but you, you don't even notice it visually you can, it just feels a little bit tighter in your hand itself so um you know sexy i'm i'm surprised it took me this long to open it i cannot wait to obviously transfer my stuff onto it so i can experience it because that's the fun about new devices like this it's yes the hardware is fun it's great let's play with it but what we're going to be talking about over the coming weeks is going to be the software and how we put that power to use yeah. because yes, these are powerful devices. And yes, there's that USB C connector on this one as well, which is faster transfers because it is the pro line. Um, we're going to put it to the test and I'm looking forward to people at home, giving us ideas and asking us questions about it because that's the best way to experience it. And the best way to answer your questions is, well, ask the questions and we'll put it to the test specifically to what you want us to do. Oh, and the case, Stephen. I think it was. Oh my God! It, well, well, well I'll get to that in a second. But I want to ask. I, I want to mention the action button because, again, like you say, fantastic for lots of different features, and that is going to be enabled with even more features over the next few months. I think as well with that new design, that lighter design. I'm still intrigued to know, and, and you, because you have it in hand, I wonder how you feel about holding that in your hand because I got the impression this was a little bit of a scratchy material. Is that the case, or is it quite smooth? It doesn't. It's it's quite smooth. It's a very smooth material. Um, definitely, uh, you know, there are definitely funny enough more fingerprints sticking to the titanium sides than, than the matte back. So right. that's something that I know people get fussy about. I, it doesn't really bother me. I mean, that's regular wear and tear for a phone. You're going to get fingerprints on it. It's a touchscreen device. And... What do you expect? You're going to stick a case on it. So speaking of cases, um, <laughs> I've heard, I think I think the phrase I read most recently uh, before we came on air was categorically terrible. That was a review yeah. of someone that reviewing review. this case. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so like for you? I've got, a, I've got a blue iPhone 15 Pro fine woven case. So they've gotten rid of of materials that are not sustainable. And this, I, I wish I, I knew the best way to describe it. it. almost feels like just a piece of a shirt. It feels like on the sides of this case, it feels a little bit textured, almost like it's silicone around the edges, but the material, the fine woven material on the back feels like it's just like a stretched shirt over the back. And all the reviews I've mm. seen is that people are just like running their finger along it and scratching it. And it's leaving permanent marks that you can't get rid of. Overall, the case feels kind of like the silicone case, except the back itself just feels a little bit more textured. The fit on the phone is obviously a nice snug fit on the phone as I put the phone into the case here. It's got MagSafe and all that fun stuff that goes along with it. But the material definitely feels like it's a little bit more susceptible susceptible to damage you know if it was leather i'd feel a little more confident if it was even just a silicone i'd feel a little bit more confident this definitely the marks are definitely still there when i just run my finger along it and i don't even have fingernails so this is you know you know i'm not definitely yeah. putting it through its paces but you know it's a case i'd probably go for the the silicone if i had a choice myself yeah but look the, the, you know, this is the thing right all these reviewers obviously have to review it but i feel there are other cases out there, Spigeon, Otterbox, Nomad. There are lots of great brands out there that you can buy cases uh, and, of course, get the MagSafe capability yeah. because that's the other thing. And I have to say this for people. If you're buying a case, make sure it is MagSafe compliant and works Definitely. with it because some of them don't. That, that can be a problem, especially if you buy the cheaper ones on, let's just say, the big A store. 
Yeah, no, definitely. And listen, not everybody is ditching the leather and the sustainable materials. Lots of companies are still nope. putting uh, putting that stuff out there. Uh, so again, these phones available in store tomorrow. We've had them for a couple of days and we'll be putting them to the test over the coming weeks and we'll be able to give you a little bit more feedback and we'll demonstrate some of those pretty cool accessibility features because we're finding new features every day that we use these devices and we dive into iOS 17. Yeah, definitely. Steven? I think, you know, also important, yeah, also important to say LiDAR. Remember, LiDAR is yeah. the reason why a lot of people might want to go down that route for the Pro versus the uh, the regular 15. Stephen, uh, we, we're going to pick apart, pick apart the uh, Amazon event. So many announcements yesterday. Celine Lee is standing by. She is uh, the country manager uh, for Alexa in Canada. And we are so excited to welcome her back. Uh, we've She's been done our show a couple times. And uh, she's a great person to chat about all these really cool announcements. So do stick around and don't forget the question of the day, which is, what is the strangest things thing that you have asked your smart speaker? And what was the response? We'll be getting to your feedback and your comments after Celine Lee, after a break, here at Access Tech Live. We want to hear from you. Follow us on social media and get involved at Access Tech Live. We'll be right back. The latest in tech and accessibility. This is Access Tech Live with Stephen Scott and Marka Flalo. And we are back talking today all about Amazon's big devices and services event that happened just this week. And of course, here on Access State Live, we can bring you the very latest news live. That's why we're here. And uh, with us to discuss this today, we have Celine Lee, who is the Alexa Country Manager for Canada. Uh, I promise I only nearly called you Alexa once, Celine. How are you? Welcome to Access State Live. I'm well. Thank you for having me. Great to be here. Now, it's uh, occurred to me watching the event that uh, Lady A, as we like to call her here, is getting a little bit of a personality upgrade uh, over the next year. Uh, can you tell us a bit more about what's in store? Yeah, so if you think about it, it's been almost uh, a decade where we've been really steadfast in our vision about ambient intelligence. Um, and we really created this paradigm shift in how customers interact with the technology around them, especially at home, and really combining the technology in a way that works behind the scene with real world inputs to make uh, people's lives easier. Um, but um, I like that you mentioned personality because there's really um, a few things that we're doing now as, you know, AI comes in and the industry is focused on um, AI for the phone, but we're looking at it for, you know, a home assistant and we have to think about it very differently. We want it to be conversational. We want it to work for real world applications. Uh, it needs to work in your home. It needs to work for your needs. Um, it needs to be personalized and it needs to have personality. You don't want a utilitarian companion in your home. You want one with personality. And so that's one of the reasons why Alexa has already become a part of so many families and it will continue to get better. So, and she's, she's been part of my family for a very long time. And when we first started hearing rumblings about things like ChatGPT and, and large language models, I was surprised that it's taken this long for any company to actually incorporate those into a product. And I'm so happy, selfishly, that it's obviously the Echo lineup and uh, that, we're, that we're seeing really put this to use in a great way. And I think that starts with the new Let's Chat feature. Can you tell us a little bit more about that and, and how we'll be able to interact with it? Yeah, so the the idea here, again, is that uh, we want to make sure that, um, you know, uh, customers can trust the experience. And we always have value the, the trust that customers put in us. Um, it's the same with the experience here with Let's, Let's Chat. We want to make sure that, um, you know, customers can interact more conversationally. So you'd be able to, you don't have to remember exactly what's the name of the device that you created. You can just say, hey, Alexa, turn on the last, the new light that I added to the living room. And Alexa would be able to understand that. So it's really making a leapfrog in terms of making the experience um, the way you would have a conversation with another human being. I, I absolutely love that. And I love the way that you're designing that because, you know, and it was alluded to on stage and we've heard about it since that, you know, one of the biggest challenges we have, and we talk about it on our shows all the time, is you know, trying to explain some of this technology to 
other people who aren't particularly as technical as us. And there's usually one person in the family, right? It's usually Mark, it's usually me, who, you know, in our families who, you know, people will come to and, and try and fix the problem. And it'd be great if it was just that little bit simpler. Now, on that point, uh, of course, hardware. Uh, we saw a lot of new hardware, but one thing in particular, in fact, first up, was the brand new Echo Show 8. Can you tell us a bit about what's new in this design this year? Yes, the Echo Show 8 uh, has this beautiful, um, you know, glass screen. We've also centered the camera so that it makes uh, any conversation uh, through calls more natural, uh, has redesigned and improved audio. Um, I think you really see coming through this uh, different upgrades, uh, just a way of making the device even more, um, you know, immersed in your environment, uh, fading in the background when you don't need it. Also has... Uh, the ability to adapt the content to where you are in the room. So if you're far, the screen might show you, um, you know, in big letters, a clock, some news headlines. Uh, but as you get closer, you'll have more details, maybe a detailed weather forecast, something that makes sense as you're, you know, closer to the screen. So it has this adaptive content as well, and it really seamlessly integrates in your uh, environment. I love how the service and just all the hardware is becoming more relevant to life, you know, more more relevant to what we're doing on an individual basis and more customizable that way. And I should mention, not all these features are going to be available, obviously, in Canada right away. A lot of the time they come out in the U.S. and eventually make their way to other countries. So we'll obviously keep our eye on, on that. Um, what are the big focus? And we talked about this earlier on the show today um, from, from Amazon on stage was a clear commitment and a lot of time spent on accessibility features. Talk about eye gaze technology, call tran translation, uh, emergency uh, access and support for people. Can you tell us about that and the company's commitment overall to accessibility and, and also why it got that big of a spotlight? Yeah, I'm so I'm so glad we were able to uh, have uh, you know an in-person presentation and to really showcase what we do every day in that uh, you know domain. And so, really, designing accessible products at Amazon starts the same way we do most things. It's by working backwards from the customer, and that's because customer obsession is really core to our company, and it's one of our leadership principles. To create uh, these products, we, we usually ask ourselves two questions. First, how will we ensure this product is accessible? And then second, is there anything about this product that might be especially important or impactful for customers with disabilities? Um, and you know, of course, that a key ingredient to designing and inventing products for everyone, including people with disabilities, is to be working with people with disabilities. That includes people uh, in our company from engineering and QA roles, program management, user research. Um, they're really living the experience we strive to build for and understand it firsthand. We also hear a lot from our customers, and that's a huge source of inspiration. Um, in the presentation, we were able to uh, share how some of uh, the features um, including eye gaze was actually inspired by uh, customer stories as well. So really excited to, to have these um, live for customers soon. Yeah, I wanted to dig into that a little bit because of course that feedback from customers must be really important. And I wonder how much feedback you get from uh, disabled customers when you roll these features out. What, what, what do people say to you? What, what are the responses? Do you get a lot of feedback? We do get several, you know, it goes from um, stories that are really, um, really heartwarming, uh, customers who are cardioplegic and have shared how Alexa on Fire TV is a life-saving product because now they can independently watch TV without assistance from their family. Uh, definitely stories of uh, people using uh, our emergency alerts uh, or calling for um, an emergency situation, um, and that really saved their lives. And then we have different use cases that are also um, shared very often, customers who are blind or low, have low vision and can use our Alexa show and tell feature to hold the household pantry item and uh, Alexa will tell them what it is. Um, and you know, in, in Canada, we've have also some uh, very unique partnerships. Uh, we've worked with uh, nonprofits, like for instance, Connected Canadians to work with um, seniors and older adults and, and uh, see how Alexa can help them live independently, uh, both in independently and uh, in care homes, as well as the Canadian National Institute for the Blind, where we've been in discussions. So there's really a lot of interests uh, out there and, and we're eager to, um, you know, make the best of Alexa to help people's lives. 
So then obviously there were, you know, announcements, new hardware on the Fire TV side, and there's also some security stuff. When are we going to see these products uh, make it to Amazon.ca? Oh, sorry, we lost our audio there. Okay, so we'll give, uh, thank you, honestly, Sinead, for being here. Uh, we were going to wrap up anyway, but uh, uh, that's Celine Lee, <laughs> Amazon Country Manager for Alexa. Uh, we, obviously, I think in stores now, the Echo Show 8 is actually available for pre-order now, and a lot of the Fire TV stuff are coming, I believe, in October, but we'll confirm with that and let you guys know on social media. Uh, thank you to Celine Lee. Coming up, Stephen. We've got to get to people's questions because people are answering our question, Definitely. which is, what is the strangest thing you've asked your smart speaker? Uh, I've asked it where Celine Lee's audio went, and, <laughs> and we'll find out the response after a quick break <laughs> here at Access Tech Live. We want to hear from you. Follow us on social media and get involved at Access Tech Live. We'll be right back. Accessibility. This is Access Tech Live with Stephen Scott and Marco Flalo. I am Stephen Scott. He is Marco Flalo, and we are about to find out what you've been saying. Oh, uh, because of course we've been <laughs> asking the big question of the day. You know, I have to ask you this one, Marco. What's the strangest yeah. thing you've ever asked, Lady? A, and what was the response? Oh, don't put me on the spot. You think I would have thought of this beforehand? Um, what was the strangest <laughs> thing? Yeah, I, I don't think I could pinpoint it because I really try to set her off a lot. Like, I mean, there was the first time mm -hmm. I ever said, uh, say happy birthday, and then she started singing to us, you know? And you can actually say, yeah. hey, hey, lady, sing happy birthday to Stephen, and she'll come up with one specifically to Stephen, and it'll rhyme with Stephen. It's 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 pretty nuts, the uh, the the distorted minds, I think, of the people who are programming these things to work in our in our in our homes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think mine uh, always is animal noises. My wife, and she won't mind me saying this, or maybe she will, too late, uh, but she loves making it do animal noises. I don't know what that's about. Anyway, look, let's find out what other people have been saying. Uh, lots of feedback coming in on social and email. Yeah, here's one from Kara who wrote, uh, I asked Siri what I should have for dinner tonight, and Siri replied, it helps to watch what you eat. Otherwise, you wow. don't know. <laughs> Otherwise, you don't know what you're eating. Not helpful. LOL. Ooh. Wow, that's a bit rude. Um, I, I don't cheeky. even. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. That sorry, Kara. Um, Elon twenty four. Not the same Elon. I I think. Uh, Rice. I ask Alexa to tell me jokes all the time. She's a great source of horrible dad jokes. I can absolutely attest to that. I have never had a joke that made me really. I mean, I've had the, the you know, the, every once in a while, the ha ha, but never like a really good chuckle. They are definitely really no, no. cheesy jokes. And you're a dad, right? You know all these dad jokes. Of course, I know them all. Every single one of them. Every you single one all. of them. <laughs> uh, Patrick okay, in town writes, yeah. Patrick and dad writes, my daughter asked my A-lady if she could sing an auto-tune. And guess what? She starts singing. In auto-tune. I guess people at Amazon do have a wow. sense of humor. This is what I'm saying. I mean, they do program these devices to have some kind of fun. And there's also, they, they're constantly updating things. I remember uh, way back when, when there was an Amazon event coming up and you asked it, hey, what's coming up? And it, it you know, actually it mentioned the specific event and the date and the time. It was kind of interesting, the context that it put in. Anyhow, it's 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 yeah, always it's, fun. So. It's a lot of fun. And, 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 you know, this, as we were saying earlier, you know, the personality is just going to get better and better so you know this is going to be great maybe the jokes will improve that's the question though will that happen yeah, I, I don't know about that here's the last one uh from andrea i realized my google home was pretty good with pop culture references some friends and i were hanging out and somehow someone asked ours who is the real slim shady and to our surprise it answered correctly okay well i guess you know m &M oh, references there you go. Are, yeah it's too bad i didn't start singing because that would have been fun so uh thank you for taking part of course uh, we'll keep that question up uh, for the next week until we come up with something even more clever next week Stephen, to uh, ask the audience at home ask lady a she can come up with a good uh, question for us for next oh, week there you go that's a, get the text to do really, it that's a really good point uh, i don't know about you but uh when the show is done i'm finally going to transfer my uh iphone to the new iphone 15 and then we're going to play the hand me down mm. game in my house and see who gets what uh but it's it's <laughs> we're going to see we're going to see how that ends up working out uh steven thank you as always uh an awesome show only number thank two you. 
Now, eventually you'll be saying it's number 200 and we'll get there. Uh, thank you, of course, to Celine Lee and Patrick O'Rourke. On behalf of uh, Stephen Scott, I am Marco Flalo. Follow us online. It is at Access Tech Live. And we will catch you next week on episode number three here of Access Tech Live on AMI TV. Have a good week. Thanks for tuning in to Access Tech Live. Follow us online at all social media at Access Tech Live. Email us feedback at accesstechlive.com. Hosted by Stephen Scott in Glasgow and Marka Flalo in Montreal. Written by Stephen Scott and Marka Flalo. Live show director, Anastasia Spalding Stenhouse. Technical director, Caitlin Robinson. Audio, Jordan Mulgrave. Live graphics and playback, Kingsley Juco. Graphics coordinator, Eliza Rocco. Integrated described video specialist, M. Williams. Supervising producer, Michelle Dudis. Copyright 2023, Accessible Media Inc. An AMI original production.